Honorable Minister of Health and Sports, Government of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, Ms. Deccan Wangmo, Honorable Minister of Health, Royal Government of Bhutan, Mr. Abdullah Amin, Honorable Minister of Health, Government of the Republic of Maldives, Ms. O. Chun Bok, Honorable Minister of Public Health, Government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Mr. Sathit Pitutecha, Honorable Deputy Minister of Public Health, Royal Thai Government, Dr. Anu Sugi Hentono, Honorable Deputy Minister and Director General for Public Health, Government of Republic of Indonesia, Distinguished, esteemed other dignitaries, Dr. Poonam Ketrapal Singh, Regional Director, WHO Southeast Asia Region, Dr. Bernard F. Schwer Flander, Chef D. Cabinet, WHO Headquarters, Ambassadors, High Commissioners, Distinguished Delegates, my colleagues, Madam Preeti Sudan, Secretary Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, Senior Officers from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Representatives from the United Nations Agencies, WHO and Partner Organizations. Well, friends, we, uh, before I say something about this meeting, let me all, uh, let me wish all of you a great day because today is a very pious day. It's uh, Ganesh Chaturthi, uh, my secretary also mentioned about it. And we in India know that Lord Ganesha, he is the, uh, he's, uh, supposed to be the god of uh, intellect and wisdom. And I think we couldn't have chosen a better day to start this uh, very important meeting. And I would pray to God to bestow. And he's supposed to be a, a super specialist for uh, removing all the obstacles and all the difficulties. So uh, uh, we, we couldn't have a better blessing uh, on this day uh, than from Lord Ganesha. So I am uh, just uh, praying to him to bestow all his blessings and all his uh, affection uh, to, and all his specialty uh, mechanisms to all of us to be able to fight diseases and to uh, provide better health care for the people of this world. Well, uh, friends, it's a matter of great honor for me to be present here today to welcome all the dignitaries, including the honorable ministers of eight of the member countries who are visiting India to attend the 72nd session of the WHO Regional Committee for Southeast Asia. On behalf of the people of India, my government, and especially our Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi ji, I extend warm greetings and heartiest good wishes to the visiting excellencies and all delegates present here today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I feel proud as I stand on this prestigious dais before all of you to say that today India is on the brink of a healthcare sector revolution. My government, with Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji at the helm of affairs, is moving with urgency to change the health landscape of India. Our targets are ambitious and unprecedented. We want no compromise on the health of our citizens. Universal health for all, a disease-free India, and global standards of excellence in healthcare is our aim for a new India. The year 2014 marked a watershed moment in the Indian public health care system. It was the year when we kick-started our first innings with Shri Narendra Modi ji as Honorable Prime Minister. The Prime Minister spelled out his commitment in no uncertain terms that the health of our citizens was his government's top priority. It was a watershed year in more than one way. My friends at the World Health Organization will recall that on March 27, 2014, 
India was declared a polio free nation. For a country of 1.3 billion people, that was a spectacular achievement. I am tearful even now as I recall how we had been battling the dreaded disease for decades. It had been my life's mission and we had succeeded. Modi ji had a spectacular first innings from 2014 to 2019. No wonder that he returned as Prime Minister in 2019 elections with a thumping majority as he became the hero of the Indian public. A statesman, a dynamic leader who elevated the status of India on the global stage, he once again set the juggernaut rolling. Health became the national priority. It became our mission. He fast-tracked many policy initiatives aimed at achieving all the core tenets of universal health coverage to deliver affordable and inclusive health care for all. The launch of Ayushman Bharat, that is Long Live India, in September 2018 marked a significant landmark in the history of health in India. Ayushman Bharat is India's road to universal health care. The first component of this is the creation of 1,50,000 health and wellness centers for preventive and promotive health care. We have already operationalized more than 20,000 health and wellness centers. The second component, Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana is aimed at providing health protection cover to over 100 million poor and vulnerable families for secondary and tertiary care, including pre and post hospitalization expenses. Key features include health cover of up to rupees 500,000 per family. A total of 17,000 hospitals have been empaneled so far under this scheme. More than 4.1 million persons have become beneficiaries under the scheme and have thus saved a total of an approximate 120 billion Indian rupees on health expenditure. Similarly, the National Health Mission, which is India's flagship health reform program, also provides a robust platform for implementation of a range of interventions focused on primary and secondary health care in rural and urban areas. My government is trying to address all pain points. We have made tremendous improvements in maternal and child survival through targeted interventions under reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health strategy to improve the quality of care at labor rooms and also the matern maternity operation theaters. Ending vaccine preventable diseases remains an important priority and we have charted out a plan to increase full humanization coverage to 90% children through intensification of campaigns under our mission Indra Dhanush. The range of diseases covered under universal immunization program has also been increased with inclusion of rotavirus, pneumococcal and measles rubella vaccines. We have also further intensified our efforts for phased elimination of measles, malaria, leprosy, kala azar and phyleriasis and improving measures for the prevention of vector-borne diseases. I am pleased to announce that we have also undertaken major reforms in the medical education sector with the ultimate aim of increasing the availability of professional doctors in the country and improving the doctor-patient ratio. Setting up of 82 new medical colleges had already been approved and now I am happy to inform you that the government has approved setting up of another 75 colleges. In all, we have added more than 28,000 MBBS seats and 17,000 PG seats in the last five years. To bring on regulatory reforms, we have taken a big step in enacting a new legislation in Parliament. A National Medical Commission, which will replace the old Medical Council of India and will bring about progressive reforms in ensuring better standards of medical education and availability of adequate and qualified medical professionals. 
अंडर द प्रधानमंत्री स्वास्थ्य सुरक्षा योजना ए टोटल ऑफ 21 न्यू स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट हॉस्पिटल्स एम्स ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज आर बींग एस्टैब्लिश्ड अक्रॉस द कंट्री टू प्रोवाइड रिक्वायर्ड सुपर स्पेशलिटी टर्शरी केयर फैसिलिटीज एंड टू ब्रिज रीजनल डिस्पैरिटीज We have also set a target to end tuberculosis in India by 2025, five years ahead of the global SDG target. To address the burgeoning epidemic of non-communicable diseases, we have undertaken screening, prevention, management, and control of common NCDs. Excellencies, unsafe food. and poor diet create a vicious cycle of disease and malnutrition particularly affecting infants young children elderly and sick india is passing through an epidemiological shift from communicable to non communicable diseases and the burden of diet related diseases such as diabetes hypertension and obesity is rising rapidly I am happy to share with you that the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has adopted a food systems approach to ensure our citizens have access to safe and healthy food. This approach judiciously combines the regulatory and capacity building measures with consumer empowerment initiatives. Citizens are being sensitized through a people's movement called Eat Right India. Its tagline: "Sahi bhojan, better jivan." Right diet leads to a better quality life. Depicts India's commitment to preventive and promotive health care as an important pillar of our health policy. I must take this opportunity to thank our youth icon. the cricket superstar virat kohli who has helped us to launch a massive campaign eat right stay fit tabhi india super fit i have myself initiated the eat right india campaign on social media and i regularly address my twitter followers on healthy eating and healthy living each morning Currently the government is observing the entire month of September as Poshan Mah which means sensitizing the public towards healthy eating and intensifying the campaign towards a malnutrition free India distinguished delegates India has now also begun to leverage technological innovations in the health arena we have prepared a national digital health blueprint that will create longitudinal electronic health records of 1.3 billion citizens of the country making health services more transparent and accessible india took world stage when it moved the digital health resolution in the 71st world health assembly in geneva and the same was unanimously adopted India has further taken up this agenda in FAB 2019 as the chair through the Global Digital Health Partnership. I would like to request all of you to join the GDHP as member states and support Southeast Asia region to stay at the forefront of international policy developments on digital health. Our focus is also on artificial intelligence interventions in the indian healthcare ecosystem in a country like india where the doctor patient ratio is squid squid artificial intelligence based solutions can go a long way in bridging the demand supply gap excellencies 3 days ago our honorable prime minister launched the fit india movement coinciding with the national sports day celebrations this campaign aims at encouraging people to include physical activity and sports as a routine in their everyday life this along with the eat right india campaign will help us to fight lifestyle diseases like hypertension obesity and diabetes effectively also recognizing the importance of traditional medicines in healthcare delivery india has launched 
the national ayush mission similarly yoga is an integral component of the preventive health care initiative by india highlighting the importance of yoga honorable prime minister modi ji has described yoga as a free life insurance which everyone can avail of my dear friends last month the indian council of medical research in delhi hosted the first meeting of the regional research platform for emerging infectious diseases of public health importance in the who southeast asia region it was decided to establish the regional enabler for south east asia research collaboration for health platform on emerging and re emerging infectious diseases the research platform will address evolving research priorities as per local and common needs of the member states of the region and enable the sharing of resources human financial and infrastructural corpus of learning information and products for the member countries in the south east asian region distinguished delegates i have witnessed the personal commitment and energy devoted by who southeast asia regional director dr poonam khetrapal singh whose constant engagement with all stakeholders has contributed massively to the positive reforms in the region home to over 1/4 of the global population who southeast asia region has made remarkable progress in several priority programs in the last 5 years I really look forward to a strong and continued collaboration with all the respected member states as we move forward on attaining sustainable development goals through universal health coverage. In this regard, I implore WHO Southeast Asia Regional Office to undertake a mission mode approach in not only disseminating policy and technical guidelines but also creating public health success stories from the region by aiding better implementation of policies and programs in member states who has always provided thought leadership in the field of health care i had myself as a doctor by profession got the chance to work with this prestigious organization as an advisor for a couple of years ladies and gentlemen I would like to conclude now by invoking a mantra mantra from the ancient Indian scriptures that remains the guiding light for us Indians Sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya it means may all be happy forever may all remain healthy forever once again greetings from the people of India I thank you all for being with us here today. Jai Hind.